Hey guys, welcome back to Flowpoint Television. I'm Marcus Brown, I'm here with Rob Hazelwood. We're gonna recap the Open Women's Slalom Final of the 2021 World Championships. Okay, let's take a look at the Slalom leaderboard from the preliminary rounds. There's a lot of big names, a big cut, one and a half, 39, to make the finals, but there's some names missing. Rob, who did we not see in the finals? I mean, the first one, noticeably, is Brooke Baldwin. She was skiing really well this season. She's had a fantastic year and just made a little bit of a mistake coming in here big oh big amount of slack line all the way through trying to fight her way through it but just got two down course a lot of slack flying around there Paige Reini. yep here's another one Paige Reini really messed up here she she's been looking so good all season an uncharacteristic fall and yeah it's a shame to see but it can happen to the best of us it's the world championships here's chelsea mill she's had a nagging ankle injury that she yeah. hasn't really yeah, healed yet. yet. It's been two months, she hasn't stopped skiing. She's been working for this world the whole way through. She did a great job to run 38, but just couldn't quite get it together on 39. Check out this 1125. This is maybe one of the cleanest of the prelims from Jamie Metcalf. She's been strong the last couple of years. What, a third place at the World Championships yeah. three, two years ago? Yeah, so strong and just really looking dominant and just, just got caught up there at five and that was the end of it. But like I say, one of the best 38 to the tournament up to the end and the best crash there. All right, so this is the Open Women's start list for the 2021 World Championships. Some familiar names. We're kicking off with Bree Carter, a girl from Tennessee that uh, made the Masters for the first time mm -hmm. this year. She had a really great start to the season, making it in the LCQ. This is her first Worlds, and she looked pretty strong here in the finals. Back on the water, here is Bree Carter, and it is 11 meters. This is 38 off. And she's going to need a great start here. She's got it. She's got a good, strong number one. Reach big at number two. A lot of spray in the face, but she's still on time. Can she dig it in here at the pass gets towards the, the end? Oh, she's going to do it. Oh, she's There's got six this. boys. 11.25 meters under a bell. Fantastic skiing there. Bree Carter here, 39 off. She's just going to go for it here. In the prelims, she just had to qualify. Now she can just, uh, just absolutely go for it. She gets around two and a big tumble. Well, that's going to be a judge's call whether she got that ski around number two that time. I'm sure that was a that was a close call for the judges. Here we go. Look at that. That's the aggression that we like to see. And just inside of it. And again, challenging for the best crash there. That was... Yeah. Oh, there we go. Crowd pleaser, but that's not what she wanted. I, I still think she's going to be happy at the end of it with such a killer performance in her first Worlds. Yeah, first Worlds. That's an amazing performance. All right, up next, Elizabeth Montavon. We go. This is Elizabeth Montavon right here, right now, 11.25 meters. Yes, this is a must run pass here for Elizabeth as she comes in. Round number one, big number one, sits on the back of the ski, gets across the two. Strong tight line at two, and she is on time. Like I said, the first round, she killed this pass. Oh, a little hard at number four, and that's it. Oh, my a little word. too much, Tony. She looked great, one, two, and three. Hooked up strong at four and just couldn't quite maintain that position and that was it. You can see Elizabeth there really emotional at not making this finals, but this is her prelims. She would made a really gutsy move to turn this two ball in the prelims. And you can see there, she knew that she'd maybe made a mistake, but she managed to just squeak into that finals. Next competitor up on the water from Australia is Vanessa Veek. Try it, yeah. 13 meter pass. A bit of a formality here for Vanessa. A nice just a little smooth warm up pass to get uh, her, her bearings on her ski and get herself warmed up. But it's very tight number two. And she does uh, a very good job. Oh my goodness. Oh my word. That was, a, oh, that, this would, this is a bit bigger shock than the, than the one we just saw from Elizabeth Montavon. Yeah, it's a tough break for Vanessa. She's had a killer year, breakout year actually coming out of nowhere and she had a kicker issue in this final round, but this is the prelims, shows how strong of a skier she is. That's five ball at 11.25 and she has a heck of a performance to get into the finals in her first world championships ever. Yeah, she's been really on form this season and looking strong. Look, you can see her in the prelims, happy to be in the finals and looking strong. Up next, Allie Nicholson. All right, let's do it. Five. She's been running this pass very, very consistently. We've seen some upsets on from their last two competitors, though. One fell short here at 11. That's it's still a lot of pressure. Let's see what she can do. One of six gears in the field to uh, to tie with a two at 10.75 meters. This is 11.25 meters now. 
Good strike there off a of number four into number five. And our second skier to get through 11.25 minutes is Ali Nicholson. Ali Nicholson, another woman that has been on absolute fire this year. She's made every single final since Swiss Pro and just really been super, super consistent. I mean, look at this, looking really strong through this 38. Yeah, she, she uh, took two months off of nursing before this Worlds to try to prepare. And I know uh, she had her heart uh, in it going to this event and it paid off. She made it here in the finals and she just got through the 11 to five meter line in the finals of her first world championships ever. She did a great job to get through that. Let's see what she can do on 10.75 meters. It all rests on the entrance gate to number one. Take it. Oh. So we saw it right there, the hands go up. She's not happy with that performance, but she was going for it. That was a super strong gate. Maybe, maybe overcooked it a little bit, got a bit excited, really wanted to nail number one ball. We watched this gate again. Gets that shoulder down. She's so strong through the wakes, but maybe generated a little bit too much speed. Went past one a little bit, lost the line, and uh, couldn't quite hold on to that. The hit coming out of number one. At this moment in time, uh, looks like having uh, Brie Carter right at the top at this moment. This is 11.25, Tony. All right, in this five-star event of the Water Ski Pro Tour, if she can get in fourth place on higher, then she'll move up the rankings and uh, take us fifth place away the, from uh, from current holder of that position, Sam Dimala. Here she comes, Karen True Love. That's number four. That's number five. And look at her go around. Oh. Bowie number six. Let's give it up for her, please. Yes. Karen True Love, eleven point two. Well done, years. Karen True Love. I tell you what, that was a very very solid uh, thirty-eight off pass. That's going to be some confidence building going into this 39. There's one score that's immediately above her at this time, and that is a half a buoy at, uh, at 10.75 meters. And then there's one and a half also on that same line length by Brie Carter. Here she comes, Karen True Love, number one. Oh, look at that. Oh, and she goes down and she ties the, uh, the score. No, she actually goes ahead of Brie Carter with one and a half at 10.75 meters, and that is courtesy of Karen Trulove. And Karen Trulove, you can see she's just been on fire this season again. She's been so, so, so consistent. I don't think I've seen her miss a, 30, uh, a 38 once. Just really kind of showing that. I mean, look at that one boy. Really nice, strong start. It's a great start, Rob. And you know what? I think Karen's been skiing worlds for nearly three decades. And like you said, she's always one of the most consistent skiers. Yeah, that's six years before I was born. So she's, she's been around, she knows what to do. Our next skier to hit the water is going to be Alicia Bagnali. And she qualified into the women's slalom final out of series three in the elimination round. Yeah, she is having the tournament of her life here, I think. She's through 14, 13 and 12. Now this is 11. The must run past Tony, must run past if she wants to have any sort of chance in this slalom final. This is our first slalom final of the 2021 World Championships. Elice coming into number one. That's a better number, number one, better start for her. Big number two, a little bit of a stop start though. She's down course at three, ropes it in, still turning four. Unfortunately, that's all she wrote there for Elice. Yeah, Elice looking really good. I know she wanted more, but she's the only skier from series three to actually make the finals. So I know she's she's gotta be happy with that. And uh, yeah, I don't know, Rob, what do you think? She's looking actually not bad out of two. Yeah, this was like like Kyle said, this is uh, this is actually in the prelim she set an Italian record with two at 39. And she has been putting in a ton of work behind the scenes with TWBC to bring us this awesome footage. And yeah, I'm sure she's happy with that prelims. I know she wanted more, but she'll be back. Skier on the water now. This is Samantha Dumala. Her 11 meter pass, she's got a slight headwind coming in to number one and a tight line turn. Tony, what do you think? Liking what she's doing out there and uh, just trying to stay on pace with the course on 11.25 meters, keeping the ski ahead of her and keeping it moving. There's number five, there's number six. That is a six buoy count, 11.25 meters. And here we go with Samantha coming in on that same pass. Can she take the lead? She's going to need a big number one which she has a little bit of loose line, but she's got a good strong lean. Can she hook up at two? Yes, yeah, she's got a piece of three. She's still going. Three buoys unofficially, three at 10.75. 
Yeah, Sam Him showing a really strong move at this 39. And this is actually, she just started med school this season. Um, so she's had a super busy year, but she's been skiing really well at the pro tournaments that she's managed to make it to. Yeah, her worst finish this year was a fifth place out of four pro events. And uh, she's, she's looked really strong. I think that maybe the world's nerves got to her a little bit, but I don't yeah. know, man. She could have got down the rope. I've seen her get, get down the line. Yeah, we've seen her get down it this year, but I'm sure three at 39, it's been kind of an average score for her this year. But again, she'll be back for many worlds. So we're looking around the dock side right now. A few of our competitors getting limber for their returns out there on the water. We've got uh, Jamie Bull about to, uh, to ski. And on the water at this time is uh, Hannah Ederback. Watch Hannah come through here at 38 off. She's got a pretty good wumble. She got through this pass in the prelims again. And one of those skiers tied up that two at 39. Tight number three, ducks around number four, and it's all over. We've seen quite a few skiers come unstuck here at number four ball. A lot of pressure as they get down the end of the lake. So Hannah Eden back here coming in. This is actually her first pro tournament of the season. She's been a busy woman, so not managing to make it uh, on the tour but she had a really strong showing in the prelims and actually her best score this season in a ranking stunt was three at 38. So really putting out a big score to make it into this finals. And I'm sure she's a little bit annoyed. She had a good start at this 38 here, but just not quite getting it together at the finish, eh? So we basically down to the big four. If you saw the Malibu final a few weeks ago, all four of these ladies ran 10-7 in the final. We don't have a big score on the board right now. We've got a three at 10-7. It looks as if Whitney is here. So we're gonna see which one of these final four takes the champs. Like Wade said, we're onto that top four. The big four, the girls that are running 39 consistently. Jamie Bull, she's in the top spot of that Pro Tour leaderboard. She has really come of age in the last couple of years. She's done very, very well as a junior in the under 21s, but now starting to make a big impact in the pros. And a few events, a few titles under her belt. And she'll be aiming for one more. This one she hasn't got yet. Uh, the remaining three skiers all have a title, all have a world champion's title under their belt. Uh, but she definitely wants to take a piece of this open worlds. And here she comes in. She scored three, three at 39 off. And that's our current lead. Let's see if she can surpass it in this final. All right, here we go. This is Jamie Bull. Andrews Gates buoy number one, the top score in the lead right now is three at 10.75 meters by Samantha Dumala. Here we go, Tony. I think we could see it here. She's got a great number five, pulls all the way to number six. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. yeah. She's pumped. That's it. That's our first 39. Guys, get behind her. Give her a round of applause, those on side here. What a fantastic performance. She scored three on that pass in the prelims, but we know she was just taking it a little bit easy. Now she's unleashed a full six buoys, 10, seven, five, and uh, she's got a personal best of, I think two, two at 41, which is this next pass. And she's got three skiers remaining. They can all do about the same. And this actually represents the podium target as well because uh, for our remaining skiers to uh, guarantee themselves a spot on the podium right from the get-go they have to exceed the score like a little bit of a hit off number five there on this replay but gets back into it it was no question there was no way she wasn't going to make it across pulled very super strong and a big fist pump there as she went out the gates here it is the all the extremely difficult 10 2 5 41 off let's see if she can get a full two that would be a great uh score to post this all comes down to the gate she's got her offside here she hooks up it's good she's a strong pull across the two she gets around it can she take the slack that's a full two boys wow guys this is going to get very exciting here not only that, but that's also a tie for the U21 Women's Slalom World Record. Yeah, take a look at this, Rob. I mean, 41 off in the finals. Jamie always seems to perform for the finals, and she's pretty tied off a of one, probably not quite as good as she wanted, but she she gets it done. She gets around two, she gets back to the wakes, and uh, I mean, that's a huge score yeah, with yeah, three, three women remaining. I know, speaking to her, she wanted to turn two, but as soon as she realized how narrow she was, she, she was kind of stuck there, but I mean, 
get this, her worst placement this year. She's done all but one professional tournament this summer and she's, her worst placement is a second, which is absolutely insane. It shows how dominant she's been this year and she's won four tournaments. So, I mean, just amazing skiing, such a dominant performance and all of this while she's a, a full-time student at college. So, great stuff to see. So there you see the uh, the change in the leaderboard. Two at 10.25 meters by Jamie Ball. All three remaining skiers have some titles under their belt, have some world championship titles under their belt, and have the creds to get through a piece of two at 41. Only one of those skiers has got past two, I believe. I believe it's only Regina that's got a piece of three at 41. So uh, it's an interesting little stat there. And the remaining three skiers have accounted for seven world titles. One for our next competitor, two for Whitney McClintock, and four in total for Regina Jaquis. And uh, that just gives you the, uh, the level of quality that we're about to see with the remaining three athletes about to take to the water. Starting off with our defending world slalom champion from 2019 in Putrajaya in Malaysia, representing France, this is Manon Kostar. She is uh, looking to make sure that 39 and a half off is under her belt. Here it is, it's Manon Kostard coming in. She's got a tailwind here, 1125. This is not gonna phase her though, she is, uh, Quite capable of navigating through this pass. A nice tight number two and three. And very easy round four and five. Easy pass, setting it up. So most of these skiers, Tony, you know, uh, on their harder pass, like a little breath of a head, but not too much, but just to help keep that uh, rope tight as they come through the backside of the buoy. Gives you a little bit more confidence to turn hard because you know you got the support from the boat at the exit of the turn. Now, here we go. This is 39 off, 10.75. This is the money pass here for Manon. It's a must run to get on that, or to take the lead from Jamie Bull, or he's least tire. She's got a strong two, a little bit on the backside of the ski. Tight number three, she's on time here at four. A Little bit of a loose line, she's got back. Stretches round five, and that's it, four and a half. It's not gonna be enough, Tony. Four and a half at 39. I thought she was gonna do it, but couldn't quite hold on. I mean, man on here, you can see how narrow she is into this one here at 39. A little bit of a head breeze coming in. I think she did a fantastic job to get as far down the pass as she did. Really getting a, not a strong hook up, but she's, she's there, she's going. She keeps on fighting, and that's the best thing about Manon. She just keeps on fighting through this pass. Yeah, she's the reigning world champion, and she's no stranger to pressure. And she hasn't won a pro tournament this year, but she's been on the podium six times. So I expected her to get through that pass, and you can see, as well as I was, she was surprised. Right yeah, there. she's been so close, but again, she'll be back for many more worlds to come. Next competitor to take to the water, and this is probably one of the stories of the World Championship so far there, Kyle. Oh, definitely, definitely. It's great to see Whitney is uh, in the water, ski is on, uh, and she feels ready to compete, which is uh, amazing to see. Yeah, Whitney had an unfortunate fall here in the prelims. Check this out, 41 off. She had the height, the top score at this time. She was going for two and just ski release and unbelievable crash. The by far the worst solemn crash I've ever seen. I mean, she's lucky to be coming away walking. You can see her there. She just lost exactly where she was. Such a big impact. And just look at that eye. That is, that is a painful one to see. That's tough. For sure. I'd want to be in Jamie Bull's shoes right now, sitting on the shore, waiting to see what these other girls can do. She's uh, put the score up and letting Whitney and Regina chase it. And she, Whitney's got some work to do out here. She's looking good around number one, coming into two. Unfortunately, something's happened there at two. She's given us a wave, guys. She's got out there for us. Give her a round of applause, everybody. Whitney McClintock, a valiant effort to be out there on the slalom ski today. I don't know quite what happened there. I think she just uh, maybe came up a little bit short going into two. Uh, you can tell she's uh, had quite the injury to her, to her face. And I'm, I'm sure all sorts of other parts of her body after that fall and just feeling like she couldn't continue going into number two. But a lot of respect for Whitney McClintock. Round of applause, guys. Hey guys, we're in a very interesting situation. We saw Whitney, she's uh, walking away. She went down. Uh, I heard her, uh, overheard her say that she just didn't feel comfortable. And I just looked at her, one of her uh, Canadian teammates, Stephen Naveau, Will Asher standing there. We all said, hey, if you don't feel comfortable, if you're out of balance, 
it is already a, a very dangerous sport. So she chose to go out there. She wanted to see what it felt like and uh, bless her heart. She's a former world champ, but we're going to see her back in the water real soon. One of the greatest women slalom skiers of all time, the current world record holder, four-time world women slalom champion. This is none other than Regina Jaquist. All right, everybody on side here, if you are up on your feet here, giving uh, Whitney a little bit of a cheer coming in, stay up on your feet here and cheer Regina Jaquist. This is our final uh, competitor. We've got Mario Pagozzi uh, in the towboat doing an admirable job there at the helm of that Nautica towboat. She's one of the toughest skiers around, one of the strongest athletes out there on the water. And here it is. This is the pass she needs to run, 10.75. She needs to get this job done. She does it day in, day out. She's done it so many times in her career, and hopefully we see another full pass here at 39 off. I know Jamie Bull will be watching this closely. A little bit of a hiccup there at number four. She's going to run this one. Massive two. She's on time. Coming into number four. Killer onside there. She's making a lot of progress here. She's got round five, and it is another six boys. How's that, Tony? Wow. Another completed pass at 39 off. Half a meter taken away from that uh, tow line. And this extremely short 10 2 5, 41 off meter pass. All right, then, here we go. This is Regina Jaquist for the win. She has got to get past number two and make a play on three. This is at 10.25 meters. Look at her go round buoy number one. Round number two. To oh, oh, no! She's on the back of the ski. And that means that your new world women's slalom champion. Congratulations for the first time to Jamie, Jamie Ball. Ball. Well, congratulations, Jamie. Jamie getting hugs from, from the whole support crew. Wade, Will, JT, her man. It's just, it takes a team. And this is really cool to see some of her besties right here and really the elation on her face. Skiing, like you say, it's such an individual sport, but there's a big team and it's all backed by Jamie's incredible work ethic. But we have a new champion. Your brand new world champion for the first time ever with her score of two on 10.25 meters is Canada's Jamie Ball. <laughs> There she is, guys. Everybody on site and around the world watching. Congratulations to Jamie Bull. I do think the, the best the best person won on the day, and she 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 showed it. She put in the work. She did well, and it's great to see. Let's go check in with Wade. He's with Jamie right now. Geez, if there's ever a time for me to stay out of the way, it was sort of the last two minutes. Watching the emotion, sort of a lot of father figures around the dock here. I love you like a little daughter. So you're sort of a home girl here, uh, growing up at Travers. So we could already see the emotion, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, um, to be able to do it here at Jack's, like you said, this is like the place I came to Florida from Canada and I've uh, been really lucky to ski with the Travers crew and have them take me in like family and they did an amazing job with this world. So, I mean, <laughs> to win worlds anywhere is awesome. To win here is just, I don't know. I can I have no words right now. <laughs> so I sort of have a seat at the table, if you will, and you were inside. We were keeping you on ice in case there was a, a runoff. We were like, no, man, let's let's leave her alone. And then the emotions inside the, the locker room, we'll call it, with hugs from JT, from Marcus, from myself. What was that like in there? Yeah, I mean, I'm really lucky. You know, the HO crew is awesome. And um, so being able to be in there, those guys have been super supportive throughout my entire career. And to kind of be able to share that with them, like sit there and hear it. Actually, we were watching the webcast because I was trying to like calm down and like get ready for a runoff. And the webcast was behind. And so we um, were sitting there and then all I hear is Tony <laughs> said you got around one. And then all I hear is like, my name being called as champion and then everyone just was erupting in there so it was super cool. So multiple time junior world champion, collegiate champion and now world champion. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting to you uh, the bronze medalist and in third place from France, Manon Costa. In, in second, second place, place and the winner of the silver medal from the United States of America, Regina Jaquist. And now, now presenting to you, you your gold medalist is from Canada. Her name is Jamie Ball. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. 
All right, Rob, what do you think about the final, dude? You, as you see the results there, two of 41 off from Jamie Bull. And I, I feel like that's one of the best women's slalom finals I've ever seen in any tournament. I mean, you got six of the 12 skiers had never skied a world's final and only a few fell off early. And obviously they're gonna be back hungrier the next year. Yeah, I mean, it just shows how far that women's slalom has come on in, in the last few years. I mean, that's an insane score to put out just to make the finals. But to have to, to run to run 39 to, to make second place is an absolutely insane score. And I'm excited to see where these tournaments go in the future. It was really cool to have the World Championships at a site where you guys could actually ski, where, where the conditions were ripe, where everything was set up perfect. And um, hopefully it sets a precedent for future worlds. You can see there Jamie at the end, she was getting choked up. You can see how much the world means to all of us skiers. And it's great to be able to to have nothing stopping you from skiing. There's no excuses, there's no rollers, there's no wind, there's nothing. It's just, it's the best skier on the day and putting out exactly what they've trained to do. And it's fantastic to see. It's our Olympics, it's our version of the Olympics. And that is the finals of the women's slalom event at the 2021 World Championships. Thank you for joining Rob and I here on Flowpoint TV. We'll see you next time.